so yeah, so you know, twenty years down the road here, the reflecting on what the Grateful Dead legacy will be or is and what it will mean in American culture as time continues to stretch on. For me, my understanding of that continues to evolve and grow and it's, it's different than when I was even seeing shows. Back then I was very, uh, you could say I was very purist about the Grateful Dead in the sense of it was very clear to me that these individuals touched a sacred flame of awakening back in the Haight-Ashbury. Something very, very special happened back then in the 60s in San Francisco. And these guys were all there together to touch it and built their music and their approach to music from that place. And in my worldview, very few other musicians were, were, they were fantastic in their own right, but weren't necessarily qualified to play that kind of music, right? It was very about the individuals. And I got really hung up on that for a while. So you can imagine when Jerry passed away, and the, and the band kind of continued in different forms with new players. Um, I really struggled for a long time, I think like many folks out there, um, comparing and contrasting and feeling like the, the music itself was becoming diluted, you know, with other outside influences that hadn't glimpsed that original flame, you know. Um, but now, and I, and I, I continued going, I, st I kept still going. I love Phil, love Bobby, still love all my friends there. Um, so, you know, through a lot of chagrin and grumbling, I still, I still went. And um, I gotta say now, I, I have a clear vision for really what the Grateful Dead is in a much larger context and in a context beyond Jerry. And the guys, the guys in the band know this. They've been really brilliant about it, actually. Um, it's really, I think, at its core, they were founders of an approach to making art, an approach to making music. It's, it's like a school of thought, of philosophy. And there were forefathers to them, of course. You see, you know, you see in, the jazz, you know, in the jazz movements and things, you know, as far as the, the approach of improvisation, they certainly weren't the first to do that. But the way they combined Americana, all these various genres, with this kind of stepping out off the edge into the unknown and letting, a lot, getting out of the way as personalities and agendas and letting this larger, creative, very mysterious force come through them. They just became vessels, right? And and um, it's, it is a fairly unique approach to music. And and, and um, I see now how, since Jerry died, Phil and Bobby, in a sense kind of bringing in these various players and mentoring them and introducing them to that canon of music, in a sense they're casting the seeds of the Grateful Dead far and wide before they pass. And I had this kind of this image of them just throwing these seeds all over. You know, and some are gonna uh, land on rocky ground and some are gonna land on furrow ground and take root and become other things. But it is clearer now in 2014 than ever that this is a living, organic, ever-evolving, uh, not only body of music, but approach to music. And it's bigger than music because you can take the same approach and apply it to whatever medium is yours. You know, whatever you get off on. That basic philosophy of approaching it, getting out of the way, mastering your, mastering your technique. That's very important, I gotta say. The discipline of Practice, practice, practice. But there's no way around it. You, you have to, uh, whatever it is you get off on, devote yourself to it entirely. But learn from the Grateful Dead and, you know, maybe shelve your concepts and trust that there could be something even bigger and more fantastic than anything that your, you know, human mind could, could come up with. And that's a great, wonderful act of faith. And to me, it's very spiritual and um, can be applied to so much in life.